Hi, and welcome to this Fornav Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we are going to change the AL file of your Fornav reports. To demonstrate how to change the AL files, we will use a new report that I have prepared for this webinar. You can change the AL file for any Fornav report as long as you have control over its source extension. Therefore, it's not possible to change the AL files of the Fornav report pack. To demonstrate how to change the AL file of your Fornav reports, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will add a field to the request page. In step three, I will use this new field in my Fornav report. In the fourth and final step, I will call the Fornav API. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will change the AL file in a Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2020 Wave 1 release. I have installed the Fornav extension and I have executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on a Business Central Cloud environment. However, some of the calls to the Fornav API can be slightly different. I also have the Fornav Designer installed on my PC. The Fornav Designer can be downloaded from the Fornav website. Sometimes when you create reports, you need to be able to change the report request page. For instance, because your users need to set a filter or they may need to select an option. With Fornav, you can do this as well. Unfortunately, you can't edit the request page from the Fornav layout. You need to edit the extension file for the report. So, this is exactly what I'm going to do. We are going to have a look in, uh, at VS Code. Now, this is an extension that I've created specifically for this coffee break. And this is an on-prem extension, which means that in the app file, uh, the app.json of my extension, I need to set my target to on-premise, uh, otherwise the Fornav DLL won't work. And in the dependencies, all I have are the standard uh, Microsoft system application and the base application. If you want to change uh, AL files for Fornav cloud reports, you also need to take a dependency on the Fornav core extension. Let's have a look at my report file. This is the Fornav report file for the report that I've created, which is a, a very basic sales invoice. And you will notice I have my .NET stuff here that loads the Fornav.NET and the MS Core lib, which we need. And in this report, I can start editing stuff. So if I want to add a field to my request page, the first thing I need to do is add a global variable to my report. Now, if I scroll down to a list of global variables, you will see that the list that is currently there is in the reports for nav auto generated code uh, do not do not delete or modify and uh, they mean it when we say you shouldn't de you shouldn't delete or modify a bit of code we actually mean it so if i want to add a variable i need to add a new variable part in my report and then i can just create my new variable which is number of copies which is going to be an integer And once I've done this, I can add it to my request page. So in my request page, I'm going to create a new group. The group that's there already is the options group, which contains the Fornav uh, design button, which we use to design Fornav reports. So I will just create a new group. I will call it copies. And I will give it a caption because that's good practice. And in this group, I can add a new field where I select my global variable. Once again, I'm going to set a caption. That will make your variable slightly more readable. And of course, I need to set an application area. Otherwise, Business Central doesn't know when to display this button. So my application area is basic, same as everything else in my report. And if I save it, 
I can upload this to my Business Central tenant, which opens. And in the Business Central tenant, we've been working with the 4NAV standard reports in most coffee breaks. Today, I'm going to have a look at the My Reports because in the My Reports, I will have the uh, every report that I've created myself, which at the moment is just a coffee break edit AL. And if I run this report right now, you will notice I have my number of copies fields, which I can set to a value and uh, preview my report. Now that we have a new field on the request page, I would like to use it in my FNAF report. To do this, I need to, I need to add a column to my report. Back again to our FNAF report in, a, in uh, VS Code. In order for uh, FNAF to use these uh, global variables inside the FNAF layout, we need to push them into the FNAF layout with a new column, which I can do. I can simply find my data set and under the data item header, you'll see there's a column already there, which is also auto-generated by FNAF. And I can simply add a new one, column, number of copies, and once I've added it, added the uh, the column in, uh, in AL, I can save my report, and I can start editing my report layout in the 4NAV designer. And in order to change an AL file, I can simply open the AL file from a file on my local hard drive, which is the extension file. If I open it, you will notice that I do have indeed a very standard sales invoice. And now in the Dynamics NAV dataset, you will find the number of copies field because that's what I've added to the columns. And I can simply drag it into my report uh, let's make it red so it stands out a little bit. So the next thing I want to do, because I'm working with copies, I also want to see if my report is a copy or not. In order to do this, I can add my standard captions copy, which is a for now standard caption, which prints the text copy in whatever language the report is printing in when it is a copy of the report. So let's save this and close my report in for now and let's go back to my AL file and you will notice I will just save this to clean up the formatting you will notice that for now has changed something in my uh, in my code namely they have added the include caption is false to my column which is fine I'm happy with that so let's go and publish this And then Business Central once again to go, go to my reports. Let's run it. Uh, let's set the number of copies to five. And preview. Now we have the number of copies if, is five on the, on the report layout. And the copy text is blank because obviously this isn't a copy of my report. And for now is not actually printing any copies yet either. So now we have added the number of copies field to the report request page and the report layout. I would really like FNAF to actually print that number of copies of my report. To do this, we need to call the FNAF API. This is simply a call to the FNAF DLL or the report management code unit that tells FNAF how many copies I want to print. Please bear in mind that this call is different for cloud and on-premise. And since I'm working with on-premise, I'm going to add the call in uh, to the FNAF DLL. And to add the number of copies to my report, I simply need a simple function call in the onpre report trigger, where I can add reports for nav dot get data item, where I get my data item header, dot copies, and then simply the number of copies integer and save it. So this simple line of code calls the reports for now DLL and it says 
on the data item header, I want a number of copies. And that will cause for enough to actually go and print these copies. So once again, publish this to Business Central. Once again, go to my, my reports list and run the report. I'm going to set the number of copies to two and filter my report. Otherwise, I'm going to get a lot of data to sort through. And once I've done that, I can preview my report. You will notice that on the first page, I have the number of copies is two and the copy is not printed. Then I get the first copy of my report with once again the number of copies two and the text copy printed. And then I get the second copy of my report also with the copy text printed. Let's recap what we just did. We have added a global variable in our report. We use that variable on the report request page. Then we added a column in our report AL file for this global variable that enabled us to find and use the variable in the Fornav designer. Finally, we added a call to the Fornav API in order for Fornav to create the copies. All the code I have demonstrated today can be found on the Fornav training repository in the, uh, on the Fornav GitHub site. And thank you for listening to me so far. Mark, do we have any questions? Yeah, thanks Rene for the presentation, very clear. Um, and I think the audience agrees because currently we don't have any questions just yet. Uh, but we're going to give them uh, the opportunity to do so uh, while we go through the next slide. So if you want to know more about the product or uh, the feature that Rene just uh, demonstrated, uh, you can go to uh, fornav.com where you can find all the information about the, the product uh, and how to get started with it. Um, if you want to download the designer, uh, you can also go to the same website um, and directly go to slash download. And here you can download the latest version of the Fornav designer that you need in order to design our reports. If you want to get started with the uh, Fornav report pack, the easiest way to go is to, um, uh, to go to Microsoft App Source. In App Source, you log in with the same uh, Windows Live ID as your Business Central tenant. Um, and you simply click on um, trial which will install the full version of the Fornav report pack. Uh, we don't actually really have a, a special trial version. Uh, the only thing that makes Fornav a trial is the fact that we print a watermark on every report. And if you uh, want this uh, watermark to be uh, removed, you can order a Fornav license directly from the app in Business Central. On YouTube, you can find all the past uh, coffee breaks and webinars that we did. Um, we did a few dozen of these coffee breaks um, and they are all nicely grouped together on our YouTube channel. Um, and if after visiting all of these resources, you still have uh, questions, don't hesitate to contact us, uh, support at fornav.com. Your email will end up in our uh, support system and we generally get back to you within 24 uh, business hours. Uh, 24 hours, sorry. So still no questions. Um, so on YouTube, you can find all of the recorded uh, coffee breaks um, and we record one coffee break uh, every week. If you find that your topic is not there, you can go to uh, fornav.com slash coffee breaks and there you will find a list of upcoming coffee breaks. And if the topic of your choice is still not there, uh, you can go to um, send an email to info at fornav.com, send us your suggestion. And if we like so your suggestion, we will uh, uh, create a coffee break specially for you. And you will win uh, two fantastic prizes. The first one is that you will get an answer to your question. And the second one is that we will give you a gift certificate for 50 euros or US dollar, depending on where you are. Um, in the world and which currency works best for you. So with that, uh, thanks Rene for today's coffee break and to the audience, see you next time. Bye.